Hey guys, it's a celebration. I've got 100 subscribers. And so today for the 100 subscriber special video thing, I'm going to torture myself and rank all my favorite books, the Harry Potter series. These books are amazing. All of them are O's. This video was suggested by Gaming with Devin, and I think we are going with the official grading system of newts. So we've got O for outstanding. I gotta double check them. E for exceeds expectations. A for acceptable. P for pass. Just kidding, it's not pass. P for poor. D for dreadful and we know T, it's troll. All right, first up, we have Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, an iconic entry into the series. This video, this book, gave me nightmares. I'm not kidding, I read this, I think I was probably like nine when I read it, and I, I literally had nightmares about Hagrid. I know, of all the characters. I just remember that I read the Forbidden Forest scene and you've got the creepy Voldy stuff going on and then, no, I don't have nightmares about Voldemort or like creepy things in the forest. It's Hagrid, I don't know. Um, and then this book was just pretty epic. You had the, the bait and switch going on where the whole time you think that Snape is the villain and you find out that it's actually Quirrell and what Voldemort is on his head so I'm gonna go with just because it's the first one I'm going with excellent it's all of our entry into the series if it wasn't excellent we wouldn't have fallen in love all right next up is the Sorcerer's Stone yes that's right we're doing the Sorcerer's Stone again Chamber of Secrets the Chamber of Secrets I there are some things that were really awesome in this book. For example, Dobby, like, you can't go wrong with Dobby, though, to be fair, he was a little annoying. Um, then Moaning Myrtle, and maybe a little bit of this is the movie's influence, but, like, I love the Moaning Myrtle scenes, and they're just great. Um, I also think it's kind of funny that it's called the Chamber of Secrets and to get into the Chamber of Secrets, you have to go through chamber pots, sort of, um, but that's just, anyway. Um, and then there's a lot of cool things that we learn about Fox and, and uh, the sort of Gryffindor. This was also a really sneaky entry into um, in, into Horcruxes and, and understanding the deep, deep, deep end of the plot. Um, it was also really cool to get um, Hagrid's backstory. You get a lot more about why he got expelled. However, I got lost and like kind of started wavering when it came to the final scene when they're actually in the Chamber of Secrets, the epic ending with the Basilisk. So unfortunately i'm going with troll and you might be wondering why and the answer is i almost didn't pick up the series anymore i just the ending didn't do it for me so I'm going with troll sorry chamber of secrets and actually this is pretty surprising me or this is pretty surprising to me that i thought if any book got troll it would be the goblet of fire I don't know what it's getting, but if anyone did, I thought it was going to be Goblet of Fire, but Chamber of Secrets blows my mind. The Prisoner of Azkaban. I am literally going to read my notes to you guys. Marauder's Map. Awesome connection to Harry's past. Anime guys. Creepy Dementors. Traitorous Pets. An info dump that lasted three chapters and no one noticed. Buckbeak. Sirius Black. The Firebolt. Werewolves. Trani. Ah, oh, this book is amazing! So... O for outstanding, I think. That's what I'm going with. The Goblet of Fire actually used to be my least favorite book. Um, but on a reread that I did recently, I actually loved the mystery that is in this story. 
the tiny little piece of information or piece what is that that's not even a word the tiny little pieces of information that we get throughout the story oh my gosh it's just like a masterpiece of how well it's created um there were some things that i hated about this book from the beginning every time i read it it makes me so mad that harry and um ron just like do nothing when it comes to girls like the only time Ron tries is when he gets like Vila energy coming at him and they like just sit the dance the whole time when I was their age even though I wouldn't say I was great with girls I at least like would try and it's just like oh my gosh um then you've got a lot of like you've got Mad-Eye Moody who's not Mad-Eye Moody Dumbledore who rages at Harry oh wait that's no 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 then you've got um there's just like so many things going on i i liked this book because of the triwizard tournament i thought it was a fun idea but the the first time i went through it there were just too many things that bugged me mostly about harry and just like the way he was acting all the time especially with him and ron like being angry at each other there was just like too much weird like i don't know weird teenagey stuff which like i don't know i was that age you'd think i would identify with it better um but i'm gonna put it at poor just because i liked it better now than i did when i was a kid but it was my le it used to be my least favorite so it's getting a p for poor all right order of the phoenix this book i'm sorry so many people rag on this book but it is an emotional genius. Everybody always complained that this is like the all caps book for Harry. And it's like, of course it is. He just witnessed like the darkest wizard who killed his parents come back. He also witnessed them kill. Um, I was going to say best friend, but Cedric was never his best friend. But um, whatever Cedric was to him, like a hero maybe or like a... Uh, some at least somebody that was on the same level as him and so much was going on so much turmoil he was cut off from so many things and it's just an emotional genius and then you add in like Dumbledore's army that was so cool and you've got um oh my gosh what else happens in this book um the Hall of Prophecies was cool. He like literally takes on Death Eaters. Lucius Malfoy gets what's coming to him. Dumbledore and Voldemort fight. Um, like, oh, Umbridge is like the most epic villain and just like evil person ever. This book gets an O2. Definitely Prisoner of Azkaban beats it, but I loved this book so much. All right. Um, the Half-Blood Prince. A lot of things happen in the Half-Blood Prince. You've got like tons of like raging, lovey-dovey, what's the word, snogging. It's just like, this is the snogging book. Um, and it was a good book. You, are, it's just, It was really cool to learn about. Um, horcruxes and like really get into some of those their relationships it was definitely more of a relationship book and um, then you've got like the twist that the half-blood prince is really Snape and then Dumbledore dies and just so much is going on I think I'm gonna give this book an excellent but I don't know if I want to put it before or after sorcerer's stone i think i'm gonna put it after i i actually liked this book a lot the first time through and the second time reading it or i don't know but later reading it i realized that i didn't love it as much um as i did later book as i did when i was a kid all right finally the deathly hallows the very last book this book unfortunately i haven't done a recent reread i'm uh, in the middle of it right now but there is still a lot that's really cool in this series, in this book. You've got the the Horcruxes. You've got like dragons, 
you just going back to green guts you get to see a lot of the wizarding world that we kind of don't get to see very much because we spend a lot of time at hogwarts however it is kind of a break in the um a break in the pattern we're no longer at hogwarts and it feels off part of the story just doesn't feel the same it's not the good old harry potter that we're used to reading um there were a lot of awesome things in it that really like make up for that and especially ending with hogwarts and ending with voldemort dying and but there was also like a lot of weird stuff like getting into albus dumbledore's past now that he's dead like you take your hero and you trash him almost and then we did i felt like we did bring him back up but it was never to the point of where he was when he died and so i in some ways i almost feel like it changed how we looked at albus dumbledore our hero and um it almost changed his death a little bit and also everyone talks about how snape was like i just feel like after this book everybody was like snape and they just like wanted to love him so much and i'm sorry snape was a jerk in this book he 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 was a jerk in this book and he was a jerk in this book and okay so he loved harry's mom like you would think he would be a little bit nicer to lily's son okay he looked like james but like gosh like stop being a jerk like as a teacher i can recognize that snape does have some good teaching qualities but he like oh my gosh to treat any students the way he treats snape is just bad did i say snap the way he treats harry potter is just bad and like i would get in so much trouble especially if harry had parents Ooh, if harry had parents he's lucky i guess snape is anyway not harry um anyway because i i kind of feel like it almost like did too much for snape putting it in a I don't like the way people talk about Snape he was still a bad guy jerk Harry Potter was the book that inspired me to start writing it made me want to I wanted to go to Hogwarts just like everybody else but I wasn't content with just reading the books I decided to write myself into stories and then that evolved and I'm really glad that Harry Potter exists I want to explore the magic I wanted to explore the world and that's what I'm gonna do that's why I write I I'm gonna continue exploring and and I'm gonna continue this adventure Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're still here, you should definitely be clicking that like button by now. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I didn't mention Luna!